Hey everybody, so I know this channel is usually uh, reserved for guitar work that I do, but I just got a cool new project. This sounds weird, but I got into electric bikes recently. Got the bug, I guess, if you will, uh, to restore like an old moped and build an electric bike off of that. I'm trying to build like a cafe racer style electric bike. And I just picked up this Samadhi, but that's what we got. It's a moped frame. Got it for like 160 bucks and I'm gonna strip it all down uh, and then I'm gonna start with a bare frame and then I'm planning on welding an extra bar uh, in between right here where I can put the tank, which is actually gonna be battery uh, inside of that. I'm gonna cut that off and basically make it a seat right here. This is my first time to do it. This is an experiment. Uh, I've seen a bunch of stuff online, gone down the rabbit hole, and thought it'd be a fun new project. Uh, also, I'm trying to learn how to weld, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to do it. This should be fun. Also, if you haven't yet, like and subscribe to my channel for more cool videos. Obviously, got the guitar videos, still doing all that good stuff. So yeah, stay tuned for more fun, cool videos. Yeah. What up? Yes. So after about a month of waiting, just got this in today. I'm so excited. Woo! Fat motorcycle rim. Hey! Ooh! Ooh! All this stuff came from NB Power. Uh, how I found NB Power is through Reed Bingham's channel. Uh, so if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, it's great. Um, he really knows his stuff. He was building an electric cafe racer and I stumbled across one of his videos and went on his recommendation to use NB Power uh, for the hub motor, the tire, everything. They were super awesome, easy to communicate with. This is a two and three quarters by 16. 16 was originally to replace my original rim. So they actually designed the hub with my exact measurements on my rear swing arm. Um, they took that into account uh, when doing the axle, which is awesome. Ooh, this thing's gonna be a beast. Uh, it's a 2000 watt hub motor. So yeah, and that logo is gonna come off for sure. Well, maybe it'll stay, it's kind of cool and weird. I opted for the thumb throttle at the last minute. I thought that might be a little easier to control so I can keep my hand on the, on the grip, but then also work the thumb throttle. It'd be great if I had a miter saw with, uh, with a, a metal blade but I don't, that would be a lot easier to cut like the 65 degree angle and it'd be probably cleaner, but it's okay. I'm gonna shape it more from here. Uh, but definitely when you're cutting any sort of metal like that at a really fast pace, it gets super hot. So I put oil down uh, so it wouldn't snag. I'm not gonna touch that piece that I cut off because the heat does transfer also and it, it gets really hot. So you can blister yourself really, really bad if you pick something up right after it's been cut. Don't do that, let it cool first. And that's a huge reason why I love reciprocating saws and or sawzall, if you want to call it that. It's so quick and easy. I just took a metal blade and cut the steel eight, 10 seconds. So this is gonna be the piece for this. I cut it a little long because I wanted to see how close I could get and fit it. And then also how I'm gonna do it with the gas tank. So I cut it a little extra long. I'm gonna take more of it off and then shape it to where it just drops right in uh, nicely on the beam. So I have no idea if uh, this is how you would actually weld 
this type of piece in or whatever frame wise, but this is what I feel like will work for what I'm trying to do. What I did is I wanted it at a slight angle. So ew. how this is gonna work is the tank will basically sit level right here. And I'm actually having to weld in an extra piece so that it can be pretty flush with the top here. So that way the seat um, can sit flat. Behold! Here we go. This is what it's looking like now. Kind of looks like one of those things from the Matrix, you know, that fly around like with the little squid tentacles. I don't know why I thought of that. I've got the center of my old wheel, uh, which is where my brake is. And what I've got here is I've taken off the old spokes, which fit in all these holes. I ordered fatter ones and fatter nipples because um, the old ones will not fit my new rim. Unfortunately, it's just too big. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael, please, please. Serious. please. Serious. <laughs> and the holes for the spokes are too large. What I've got to do is I've got to basically ream these holes out and or drill through with a bigger drill bit in order to accommodate this because the larger spokes won't fit into these holes, as you can see. like this and clear this piece because otherwise if I drilled straight in I wouldn't be able to move it so there it is and now this is big enough all right so I just finished my crazy welding extravaganza I've never welded before in my life so this is my first attempt at it I bought a stick welder decided that would be the best thing to get just because it's inexpensive and I could learn on it it's way harder than it looks to learn how to do there's a lot of mistakes mess ups the bar that was supposed to go right here I just punched holes straight through it with the welder uh, yeah, didn't quite know how to get that resolved, but so I turned it into a practice piece. And then I kept practicing, 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 practice more on this piece over here. I kept giving it a go, sanding it down, starting over. A lot of little pitting in there, but you know what? I feel like it's okay, you know? This isn't perfect. It's pretty grody and messy. Ooh, that's hot. But uh, I just grinded it down with a flap wheel. Yeah, that's my attempt at welding so far. 
Pretty sure that's gonna hold. It's not gonna be a lot of weight. It's not a structural component. I didn't record a lot of the welding process because it was terrible. It's nothing to watch. It's pretty bad. If you wanna watch welding videos, there's plenty of good ones out there. This was not one of them. So this is just my first attempt at learning. I was really wanting to learn how to do it, so. Now for the moment of truth. Time to try and hook the connector up to the battery and hope it doesn't explode. All right, are we ready for this? Oh man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Oh, it worked. Got the battery hooked up and got this power on, got my controller wired up, uh, wired it up to the actual um, wheel, have the bike upside down so that way I can test this out. We're not gonna run it super fast, but if I do it on normal power, uh, super, super slow, right? Great. Standard, a little bit faster, and then super fast but there's so much torque coming off of that and I don't have it fully secure so <laughs> I don't want that flying off but that thing's gonna cruise it's gonna be super super zippy like really really fast so yeah probably won't be going that fast on it but so now I'm gonna start uh, welding again what it is I cut this little uh, circle piece of 3 16 inch steel plating and I made a little circle so it would literally just drop on top of the, the tube right there because that's where the seat's going over. I don't want any open gaps on the frame. It just allows for uh, possible rust in, bugs, all that stuff. I'm also gonna seal that up as well, that square tubing. Cut a piece to go over that. That's what I'm working with. I got this nice little titanium flux cord welder. And I've never flux core welded anything. Uh, just the stick welding, so. It's gonna be fun. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier than stick welding. Let's do it. So I've come across another challenge. Of course, this whole bike is a challenge, but I want to mount a brake pad to the swing arm here. And I'm gonna have to weld that on, but I've got to get it placed like perfectly uh, or else this isn't gonna work. So I'll show you what I did. So far, uh, they had these two little pieces that were um, on here, actually. I cut them off and put them on here as mounts. Uh, but they were on either side of the swing arm and those were to mount the chain guard. So they're steel pieces, they're high quality. I cut them off and I was gonna use them to weld this piece on because I got like an extension, but it's aluminum and I don't wanna 
attempt to weld aluminum because I'd need a better welder for that. So basically what I've got so far is to try and put this on as even as possible, close the caliper so that it closes around the disc and then mount it where it is. Got one problem though, and that is the length of these and the position of these isn't quite right. This one will work, but this one needs to come out a little bit more. So we may have to mount another piece of steel right on top here so I can extend this over uh, and weld it to this guy.
All right, so I couldn't get any of the accessories to work. It's been kind of a pain to get it to work. And I've tried to get them to work by using a, a 72 to 12 volt step down converter, but it's not working. I've had so many issues getting the accessories to work. So I thought I'd try something a little different. I thought I'd try one of these little guys. And I got this off Etsy and it's a little adapter piece. And I've got a 12 volt four amp uh, basically power tool battery that I can hook into here. I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna wire it up and see because then I could just pop that on something and recharge it, carry extras, build an extra little battery box for it, and uh, I'd be good to go. Oh my God, it works. Basically all I did was hook in this battery via this little power dock to my 12 volt accessories. Accessories being my headlamp, uh, my brake, and tail lights work, which is pretty exciting. Put on my blinkers, and I can put on my high beams, low beams. I don't know where somebody recommended that, like e-bike e forum or something like that. Worked like a charm. All right, so what I did is I built this little box out of cardboard for the battery. So this will actually house the battery. This is obviously a mock-up box. I'm gonna do it all in steel and then weld it together, but I had to mock it up first. So I knew kind of my measurements and what I was dealing with and if it would work. And I'm gonna put a little shelf in here so I can put the battery in and then that way I can put like other stuff, little things if I wanted to, like little tools or whatever underneath. I'm gonna put a hinge on it so it opens and closes. It's gonna mount in here like this underneath like this and then if uh, if I need to I'm gonna put a little hinge Alright, so what I did is I wanted to find a way to like cover up the battery box area. Uh, I ordered this grill material and then now I put it in the battery box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray paint it all black uh, to match the rest of the bike so it's more low profile. I epoxied it in because welding aluminum to steel is pretty much near impossible because they have different temperature melting points. So it's really, really tough to do and it's messy. So I wasn't gonna mess with that. So I epoxied it in. Uh, I'm just gonna paint it and that will be my battery case. All right, so before my camera battery dies, because it's about to, here's what I've got. I went and welded this whole thing up. Kind of a mess, but hey, whatever. It'll work for a battery box and it's gonna be painted. So this is how it's gonna be. I've got this welded up and the batteries, this piece is going to bolt into the top of this. So that way I can clip in and clip out on the batteries. And then there's going to be like a little shelf piece, which I'm measuring with a piece of cardboard right now, underneath it, just to kind of catch it just in case. But then also I can put other little things in there, because I'm going to put a little latch door on there. So I can put like, you know, whatever I need to, I don't know, like a little tool, a little wrench or whatever, like mini set of tools.
check it out. What I did is I wired in this extra key basically for my battery. So all I have to do is plug this red key in just like that and then turn it on and that means my bike can have power. So basically unless you get up underneath this you aren't gonna be able to disconnect this so it just keeps it from people stealing my bike when I'm not around. Let's see if I can get power. Nothing. Turn my key in. Now. Power. So that pretty much concludes this build. <sighs> I've got to spray paint that little spot. It's still, I had to touch it up with some epoxy. But for the most part, it's pretty much done. Finally. After like almost a year now? <laughs> that took way too long.